Estimating Dispersal Rates and Locating Genetic Ancestors with Genome-Wide Genealogy by Matthew Osmond and Graham Coop, affectionately known as Space Trees. When we go out and measure genetic variation on the landscape, we often see strong spatial patterns. These patterns are the result of, one, individual level dispersal, the distance offspring moved from the parents, and two, population scale movements, such as populations expanding out of glacial refugia as glaciers retreat. These processes often lead to a pattern of increasing genetic dissimilarity with geographic distance, or isolation by distance. A simple model that recreates this pattern is one where lineages move randomly in space while bifurcating until we arrive at the present day sample. This is called branching Brownian motion. While this model has been very important for theory, it is only used directly for spatial inference in the case of largely non-recombining chromosomes, such as the Y, as this is the only case where we can estimate a single true tree relating our samples. Here, we take advantage of the recent ability to infer, from genomic data, a sequence of trees along recombining chromosomes, what we call a genome-wide genealogy, or tree sequence. We use this tree sequence to estimate individual level dispersal rates, as well as the location of genetic ancestors at any locus. To do this, we assume that offspring locations are normally distributed around their mother with covariance matrix sigma, which we refer to as the dispersal rate. We then calculate the shared evolutionary times of each pair of lineages at a particular tree, creating a matrix of shared times, S. Then, given the locations of our samples, here X, the probability of the observed locations given the unknown dispersal rate sigma and the estimated shared times S is normal, centered on the location of the most recent common ancestor with a variance that is the product of the dispersal rate and the shared times. We calculate the shared times for many trees in the sequence, incorporating a huge amount of data, and multiply the individual probabilities to approximate a genome-wide probability of the observed locations. We can then find the dispersal rate that maximizes this function, which is our estimate. While this might sound a bit complicated, the intuition is simply that parts of the tree where two geographically distant samples had a recent common ancestor will cause the dispersal estimate to be large, and conversely, parts of the tree where nearby samples have a distant most recent common ancestor will cause the dispersal rate to be small. Given the sample locations, the shared times in a particular tree, and our estimated dispersal rate, we can also locate genetic ancestors. Any internal point on a tree represents an ancestor of the samples below it. In this case, A is an ancestor of samples 1 and 2. And we can calculate the probability distribution of this ancestor's location. It is in fact another nice normal distribution, whose mean and variance depend on how much time the ancestor's lineage shares with each of the sample lineages. To incorporate information from across the genome, we calculate the locations of genetic ancestors for a particular sample, here sample 1, at a particular time at many loci, and use these to plot a moving cloud of ancestors, allowing us to visualize the major geographic ancestries of individual samples. While these are the fundamentals of our method, we do a few extra things to make our method more robust. For one, because we do not know the trees with certainty, and their branch lengths have been inferred under a non-spatial model, we resample the branch lengths at each tree multiple times and use a technique called important sampling to upweight trees that are more likely under a spatial model of branching Brownian motion. We can then perform a weighted average over these samples to give more correct estimates. Second, because our model of Brownian motion is likely to become less reasonable as we move further into the past, for example due to finite habitat boundaries, we can chop our trees off at a given time, here t, and perform our calculations over the resulting subtrees. And finally, because real dispersal rates are unlikely to be constant over time, we can chop time up into epochs and estimate different dispersal rates within each one. We first tested all this using simulations in SLIM, and then applied it to the 1001 genomes data set of Arabidopsis thaliana. In both cases, we use relate to infer the tree sequences and TSKit to load and manipulate them in Python. Our first finding with Arabidopsis was a rapid recent dispersal rate that is nearly 10 times larger along the east-west axis than along the north-south axis. This potentially reflects the similarity of environment across longitude, facilitating spread, and the expansion of Arabidopsis from glacial refugia about 10,000 years ago to its current wide distribution. When locating genetic ancestors, for many samples, we find that their recent ancestors were near the sampling location, reflecting local ancestry. For others, though, their recent genetic ancestors appear to come from much more distant locations, highlighting recent long-distance dispersal events. 
This data set is known to have samples with ancestry from multiple glacial refugia, including a non-relict refugium near Turkey and a relict refugium near Spain or North Africa. Consistent with this, when we locate genetic ancestors of previously identified non-relict samples from Spain, they tend to come from the northeast, closer to Turkey. In contrast, the genetic ancestors of relic samples from Spain tend to come from there. And admix samples that are known to have both ancestries show ancestors coming from both directions, depending on the locus. We find this pattern of admixture, of ancestors coming from multiple distinct locations, in many other samples as well, and use this pattern to hypothesize on the source of admixture. Finally, we use our method to identify the source and ancestry of the recent North American expansion, ignoring the locations of the 125 North American samples and locating them purely from the trees we find one large clump of samples from northeastern France and southern Germany, as well as a smattering of more distantly related samples as far north as Sweden and as far east as Russia, supporting the hypothesis of multiple colonizations. That's all for now. Thanks for listening to our work about space trees, and keep an eye out for our paper at a preprint server near you.